All right, mates, how's it going? In today's video, episode two of Lord of the Clans by Christy Golden. Let's go. Adolus felt pretty proud of himself for the next few days. He was indeed a brilliant man. In recent times, orcs were proving less and less of a challenge. Men used to the excitement of daily battles were starting to grow a little bit bored. Blackmore had put on a few fights for entertainment, giving people an outlet for their pent-up energies, as well as an opportunity to make a bit of gold. But this baby was going to make him a household name, eventually. He would have the speed and power of an orc, but it would also have brains. It would be all but undefeatable. However, it wasn't eating, and had grown quite pale since returning to Durnhold, which was causing Blackmore to get ever so slightly pissed off, taking most of his anger out on Tamis Foxton, causing him no end of agitation as well. Any word? Aye, and all bad. The orc is dying. Won't take anything Blackmore tries to feed it. Only right. He had no business bringing something like that here. It's bad enough we got adult ones screaming all day. I wish they'd hurry up with them internment camps. And it's not Durnold's problem no more. A shrill cry suddenly filled the air, and both Clania and Tamis Foxton turned to see their eldest daughter, Teresa, holding her newborn baby brother, Farolin. Petal, what are you doing up? I hear Dar come home. It's all right. Come here, darling. I so seldom get to see you these days. You're growing like a weed. Tamis then pinched his daughter's cheek gently, and she giggled, and then he returned his attention to his wife, who was now boob-feeding their son. If the orc dies, we'll all suffer for it. Da, if it's a baby, why are you trying to make it eat meat? Both adults stared at Teresa, stunned, and she simply pointed at her mother. To her, the answer was obvious, and right in front of them. Baby drink milk? Tamis continued to stare, whilst a slow smile formed across his face. Clania, my dear, she's right. Think what this would mean for our family. If this orc survives because of us, we'll lack for nothing. Clania's face then grew pale. She knew where this was going. You're not asking me... Tamis, no. Please, you only have to do it for a little while. They're monsters, Tam. Monsters. And you want me to... Oh, I need to go lie down. When Blackmore heard that his personal servant's wife had agreed to wet nurse the dying baby orc, the Foxton family were indeed showered with gifts. Nice clothes, fancy food, larger living quarters. Tamis Foxton was given a brand new horse, which he named Lady Fire for some reason. Clania, now known as Mistress Foxton, no longer had to report to the kitchens. Even Teresa was rewarded, getting her own tutor called Jaramin Skisson. Unfortunately, the newborn Foxton baby, Farolin, died of fever. Teresa lost a baby brother, but she also gained one. She was fascinated by this strange creature that had joined her family, and devastated when the orc was ripped away from them a full year later. No, hold it thus. Put your fingers here and here. That's better. Now make this motion. Like a snake. What's a snake? The orc was currently trying to master the ability to write. However, he was somewhat struggling with the letter S. <sighs> of course. A snake is a reptile with no feet. It looks like this. Oh, like a worm. All right, fine. A worm. I'll try it again. So the orc did. Sticking his tongue out of the side of his mouth with a look of sheer concentration on his face, he gave this S beast another try. It was a bit wobbly. Not the greatest S anyone would ever see. But it would do. Very good, little one. I think it's time we started teaching you numbers. But first, time to teach you how to fight, Aethril. The little orc turned to see his master, Lieutenant Blackmore, enter. So he immediately stood up straight, as Blackmore had taught him. How's he coming along? Very well. I hadn't realized orcs were quite so intelligent. He's not intelligent because he's an orc. He's intelligent because humans taught him. Never forget that, Jaramin. And you. You aren't to forget that either. Thrall shook his head, but remained silent. Look at me, Thrall. Do you know what your name means? Again, Thrall shook his head. It means slave. It means that you belong to me. It means that I own you. Do you understand? 
At that, Thrall furrowed his brow. Slave? He had a grasp of what that word meant. He'd always assumed his name was a good one. A worthy one. Not something as demeaning as slave. But those thoughts were then interrupted by a sudden sharp slap across his face. You answer when spoken to. I said, do you understand? Yeah, Mr. Blackmore. Excellent. Aidless's face then relaxed into a smile, and in turn, Thrall's lips turned upward as he attempted to mimic the facial expression. Ugh, don't do that, Thrall. Makes you look uglier than you already are. He was just trying to mimic you, sir. That's all. Well, he shouldn't. Humans smile. Orcs don't. Anyway, you said he was doing well. Can he read and write? His reading is in an advanced level. His writing... He understands how, but his thick fingers are giving him a bit of trouble with some of the lettering. That's fine. We no longer have need of your services, then. Thrall inhaled swiftly, as did the older tutor. There's still much he doesn't know yet. He knows little of numbers, of history, of art. He doesn't need to master history. I can teach him what he needs to know about numbers. And what does a slave need to know of art? <coughs> that would be a complete waste of time. No, he doesn't need to learn about such poncy things. He needs to learn how to fight. Aedalus then turned back to Thrall. I'm going to see to it that you're skilled with every weapon I've ever seen. I'm going to teach you about strategy, Thrall. And trickery. You're going to be famous in the gladiator ring. People will chant your name. How does that sound, eh? Thrall was sad to see Jaramin collecting his things and moving to depart, but he was also a quick learner. He knew he needed to respond to Aedalus quickly, or else he'd be slapped again. Sounds exciting, Master. A short while later, Thrall was taken out of his cell for the first time he could remember, escorted through a bunch of corridors, and then out of a door, outside. However, as soon as they reached the outside, Thrall saw strange black things on the ground. He didn't like those at all, so he froze. What in the blazes are you doing? Come on! Thrall then pointed at the black shapes on the ground, looking ever so slightly terrified, but that feeling of fear was immediately replaced by shame as all the guards started to laugh hysterically. By the light, I've got an orc that's afraid of his own shadow. Aedalus then gestured to one of the guards, who grabbed Thrall and dragged him forward, and they then made their way further outside, until eventually, Thrall found himself face to face with a very strange looking object. That's a training dummy. You use it for practice. Watch. Aedalus then grabbed another strange looking object. This is a wooden sword. Also, for practice. You shall be given a proper sword once you've mastered the basics. The lieutenant held the wooden sword with both hands, centred himself, and then struck the training dummy. Now you try. Thrall then took the wooden sword. It certainly fit in his palm a lot easier than the stylus did. Felt better too. Almost familiar. Very good. See boys? He's a natural. Just as I knew he would be. Now Thrall. Attack it. Thrall then lifted the sword, and he struck the training dummy with all his might. Thrall was absolutely certain he'd done that wrong, and that punishment was now headed his way, so he was quite surprised to hear a bunch of whoops fill the air, and see a huge smile on his master's face. Did I not say that he would surpass all expectations? Well done, Thrall. Well done. But I broke it. Damn right you did. Suppose you were in the gladiator ring. Suppose that dummy was real. Suppose you charged and your opponent flew like that. That's a good thing, Thrall. Thrall didn't really understand what the hell was going on, but everyone seemed happy, so whatevs. You, fetch another dummy. Make sure it's secure enough to withstand my Thrall's mighty blows. And bring me five more practice swords whilst you're at it. He's liable to break those as well. Out of the corner of his eye, Thrall saw movement. He turned to see a tall, slender man observing from nearby, and with him was a very little human being. Looked nothing like any of the other humans the orc had seen before, as far as his memory served him anyway. It looked softer, with long hair and wearing a little dress. And as his eyes locked with the little thing, it smiled and waved at him. What the bloody hell was all that about? 